Hello, hockey fans. I'm Dan Rusinowski. Welcome to SAP Center at San Jose for a very special event. Want to welcome everybody on the Sharks Audio Network, also on all of our Sharks digital channels, including Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, sjsharks.com, and of course, the Sharks plus SAP Center app presented by Western Digital. NBCSportsCalifornia.com and the My Teams app also carrying this news conference today. And of course, uh, all of us uh, 24 hours a day on the Sharks Audio Network. I'd like to acknowledge the Sharks fans who are here in person. Give yourselves a great round of applause. Wonderful turnout. We welcome Sharks 365 members, our suite holders, and our corporate partners to this very special event. And we especially want to acknowledge the members of our Teal Inner Circle Partnership Group. You are very special people, and we're very proud to have all of you here today. We've got some special guests. Of course, you see three right here at the table, including the most important one, which is to my right, and uh, to my right and your right, uh, Patrick Marlowe. But we'd also like to recognize some of the special guests that are in attendance that are not at the table. Patrick's wife, Christina, and his sons, Landon, Brody, Jagger, and Caleb. Just an amazing family. Really great to see all of you. And you're all getting really big, too. Many of Patrick and Christina's friends have also taken time to be here today, and we wanted to acknowledge their presence as well. There are a lot of people that, uh, that make a hockey family, not just the immediate family members, not just your teammates on the ice, but there are a lot of friends in the community and, of course, uh, uh, all across North America that are Patrick and Christina's friends that want to be here. I want to recognize also a couple of Patrick's former teammates that happen to be here. I'd like them to stand and just be recognized. Dan Boyle. <laughs> Curtis Brown. Jonathan Chichu. Scott Hannon. <laughs> Yevgeny Nabokov. Mike Ricci, and Devin Setaguchi. What we're here to do today is to celebrate an amazing career and to hear from Patrick in just a couple of minutes. But I thought that I would reflect a little bit on what Patrick Marlow means to the Sharks, but also means to the sport of hockey. I first met him when he was about 17 years old. We had just drafted him here in San Jose, and uh, we were going to a clinic in Lake Tahoe. And he was a, a bright-eyed young man who was really excited about the career that lay ahead of him. But who would have believed and who would have understood what an amazing career it would be? 21 seasons in a Sharks uniform. 21. It's going to be a long time before anybody even gets close to that. And of course, number one all-time in games played in the history of the National Hockey League. Patrick scored 566 career goals, 522 of them were in a San Jose uniform. He's first place, of course, in games played in Sharks history and in goals, and in points with 1,111. And he's right up there in the NHL scoring list with 1,197 points. But I thought I, I would bring up a couple of stats that really jump out at me at what Patrick meant to this team, means to the NHL, and of course, means to the game. He is the one of only five players in the history of the NHL that have done the following. 1,500 or more games, 500 or more goals, and 100 or more game-winning goals. Five players. Here's who they are. Aside from Patrick Marlowe, they are Jerome McGinley, Brendan Shanahan, Gordy Howe, and Yaramir Yager. It's pretty good company, don't you think? <laughs> On that topic of game-winning goals, he is one of only two players in the history of the NHL to have a game-winning goal against 30 NHL teams. The only team that he did not have a game-winning goal against, certainly in a Sharks uniform, was against the Vegas Golden Knights and the Seattle Kraken. And of course, he didn't play against the Seattle Kraken. Jeff Carter is the only other person in the history of the NHL that has a game-winning goal against 30 teams. And that's pretty darn good company. Brendan Shanahan and Matt Sundin have 29. As for the playoffs, some of the greatest memories uh, that I have in Sharks history came off the stick of Patrick Marlowe in the postseason. Game seven against Detroit in 2011. The Sharks had been up three games to nothing. 
Detroit fought back and forced a Game 7, and Patrick scored that Game 7 goal right here in this building. Another series winner against the Red Wings in 2010. I think that's one of my favorite calls of all time, when Joe Thornton on a two-on-one flipped the puck over to Patrick, and you knew when Patrick was coming in it was going to be money, and it was in the back of the net. He's tied for 14th in the history of the NHL with 72 playoff goals. He's tied for 9th with 16 game-winning goals in the Stanley Cup playoffs. And, of course, in the regular season, some of Patrick's accomplishments include 15 times that he scored 20 goals or more, which is an incredible number, and his season high was 44 goals in the 09-10 season. Those are just a couple of minor statistics that are pretty major in the history of Patrick Marlowe's National Hockey League career. And I haven't even mentioned the gold medals that he won for Team Canada in the Olympics representing his country, which certainly shouldn't be forgotten and must be at the very top of his career. And of course, all of the great moments that he shared in a teal uniform. Just an amazing, amazing uh, career to celebrate, that we're, and we're doing that here today. I'd like to take a moment now to introduce the president of the San Jose Sharks, Jonathan Becker, who has some comments for Patrick Marlowe. What can I say about Mr. Shark that hasn't been said so many times before? I'd like to start with a personal observation, which is I loved watching him play the game of hockey. For nearly 20 years as a fan myself, and for the last several years as a Shark exec. And boy, could he play the game of hockey. You heard from Dan how many records that Patrick has here as a Shark. The list goes on and on. I think you own nearly every offensive record that ever existed here as a team. And of course, there's the NHL all-time games play record as well. That record itself is mind-blowing. But for those who didn't pay that much attention at the time, there are two sort of minor records or facts that surround that that are even more amazing to me personally. And that is that the time that Patrick passed Gordie Howe, I love saying that statement, at the time Patrick passed Gordie Howe, he'd only missed 31 games in his entire career. That's mind-blowing, just 31 games. But if that wasn't enough, here's the stat that I can't get over. 37% of NHL players that have ever played the game of hockey have either played with Patrick or played against Patrick. That's amazing. More than a third of the entire 100 plus years of hockey you've seen play. Those are mind blowing numbers. But beyond the stats is Patrick the person, which is even more extraordinary. From the love and passion to the game of hockey, which is evident to anyone who's ever met you for even five seconds, to the dedication and the hard work, and maybe most importantly, Patrick the family man, the one that always puts family first. We salute you. I'd like to end with maybe one more personal story because Patrick doesn't know how much he's influenced so many people in so many different sports. Years ago, I was in sports analytics, and I did some work for the New York Yankees of baseball. And when the work was done, the Yankees wanted to recognize my help in some way. And finding out I was a Sharks fan, and yes, you made me a Sharks fan, they figured out the ultimate gift to give me. Yes, the New York Yankees, of baseball fame, recognize that Patrick Marlowe, number 12, is Mr. Shark. Patrick, thank you for all the memories. Thank you for all that you've done for this franchise. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Our next speaker is the interim general manager of the Sharks, who, as is the case with me, has been here since day one in the history of the franchise. Let me introduce you to Joe Will. Good morning. It's an incredible honor to be here today, surrounded by Patrick's family, friends, fans, and teammates. I've been fortunate enough to see the beginning of Patrick's NHL career, in fact, see him in junior hockey in his draft year, in every step along the way. 
I first watched Patrick when he was playing for the Seattle Thunderbirds in the Western Hockey League at 17 years old. Patrick's birthday is September 15th. And for those of you who follow the draft, that's the cutoff date for the NHL draft. Patrick actually came to our first training camp at 17 years old. And we reached out to HR actually to ask, uh, did we need any permission or anything like that? Uh, we never heard anything back from Cal OSHA, so I think we're okay. <laughs> but it just shows how remarkable um, Patrick's experience was with the Sharks. He's known for his accomplishments, but to me he's really defined by the standards that he set, and that's what I really like to talk about today. And I'd like to share something. Uh, the first is really his athletic standard. Unlike other years where there's ongoing debate about our scouts amongst who we're going to select in the draft, we knew right from the start we were going to take Patrick. The only question was really how high he could go. And to understand why Patrick could immediately make an impact in the NHL at 18 years old, never get hurt and play for 21 seasons with the Sharks and 23 overall, you only need to ask our scouts and strength coaches. Went back and looked at some of the scouting reports that we had. Exceptional skater in all facets. Extremely mesomorphic with exceptional power qualities. Blue collar work ethic. And those were the comments seen on our scouting reports and physio testing reports. Today, they're known as the Marlowe standards. We'd never seen anybody like him, and we haven't seen anybody like him since. You know, it's, it's funny, uh, sharing the record and, and passing Gordy Howe, uh, being two Saskatchewan farm kids, you know, coming through, and you could tell just that he truly was a thoroughbred, uh, you know, in the sport, and, uh, uh, you know, it's just ironic that uh, he was with Gordy Howe along the way. Um, and today, you know, when Mike Potenza or any of our scouts say, you know, that a player that we're looking at in the draft is built like Marlowe, we immediately pay attention. In 1997-1998, the season, we were coming off missing the playoffs twice. We had hired Daryl Sutter. And then 18-year-old Patrick Marlowe comes in. Patrick played a full season in the NHL at 18 years old under Daryl Sutter and was third in team scoring. It was truly exceptional and truly rare. Patrick also set a standard for poise. It's e easy to notice that Patrick always appears cool as a cucumber, but knows, those that know him best understand that it's really his extreme focus, driven by his desire to help his club win. When you meet his parents, Dennis and Jeanette, you understand where that all comes from. Why Patrick has poise, class, and a blue collar work ethic and puts his team first. His poise was a great example to the 271 players, 271 Sharks he played with, an incredible 71% of all Sharks to ever don a uniform. And Patrick's only inconsistency was being mere average and exceptional. His ability to bounce back was remarkable. He could have an average round one of the playoffs and then bounce back by being a league leader in round two. And I think what Patrick will be known for the most is his class. Patrick always takes time for everyone, his teammates, his family, his friends, fans. Patrick never put himself before the organization. And he made it his purpose to help others improve. Patrick often talks about his many teammates who mentored him, the Adam Graves, the Kelly Rudys, so many to name. But it's amazing to think all the teammates he's impacted. What a progression. Patrick the farm boy. Patrick, the junior hockey player. Patrick, the 18-year-old coming into the league. Patrick, the husband. And that's actually the exception to the poise comment. I remember the Christmas party where Patrick fell for Christina. And uh, Patrick survived uh, Daryl, but uh, Christina buckled him. And I remember that was the start of the love story right there. And just amazing to watch you grow as a family man. Patrick, the father. Watching you out on the ice with Landon, Brody, Jagger, and Caleb, it's been incredible. What you're giving back at Sharks Ice and with the Junior Sharks program, just coming in and working with players. Patrick the record breaker, and now Patrick the Sharks legend. And you truly raised the bar for this franchise. You set high standards that live today, and you've helped the franchise participate in countless playoff runs during your tenure. On behalf of the Sharks organization and Patrick Marlowe fans everywhere, Thank you for your memories. Thank you for the memories you've given to all of us and giving everything you have.
Thank you, Joe. I would like to add that Patrick Marlowe cared about everybody, all of his teammates, but also the people that were behind the scenes, whether it was the broadcast group that I work with, whether it were the people that were running technical operations with the team on television or on radio, or whether it was uh, somebody that, that, that came in to make sure that, that the bathrooms were clean. He was somebody that always took time for everybody and still does, and it cannot be forgotten either his commitment to the city of San Jose, to hockey in Northern California, and to the development of hockey in this area. I think that's really important. One little story I'll tell about Patrick that, uh, that I think talks a lot about his career is his games played streak that he finished his, his career with. 910 consecutive games up till the age of 41 plus. That's really incredible. He's fifth all time in consecutive games played with 910, and indeed, I think he played the last six weeks with a variety of bumps and bruises that would have uh, sidelined a 30-year-old, let, let alone someone over 40. One little story that I'll tell you as to why that was possible, and by the way, out of anybody who has 500 goals or more, or has played a long time, nobody comes close to that number, 910 consecutive games. Everybody else that's in that consecutive games played group scored fewer goals, and indeed uh, was much younger than Patrick was when he set that, that standard. But I remember one night, as I remember, it was in Denver, Colorado. The Sharks were in a bit of a losing streak, and the team had the day off. And I was really going to go to the gym and have a little workout. And I go in there, and the bus had just arrived. The plane had just landed. We had, you know, I, I didn't expect anything. And who was in there all by himself but Patrick Marlowe? He was so dedicated to making sure that everything was right and he was going to work his way through what for him was at that time a, a scoring slump, but also for the team, a slump on the ice. And wouldn't you know it, right after that, Patrick started scoring again. He started leading the way and uh, achieving all of the great things that he did. I'll always appreciate that and I'll always remember that little moment that I saw you in the gym there but so many others and so many other great memories. But that's enough of those right now. We're here for an announcement and for some comments today. And I would like to introduce a real hockey legend, a great human being, and a good friend, Patrick Marlowe. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so everybody knows I'm a really great speaker, so bear with me. Um, I want to thank the Sharks organization, Joe, Jonathan, for your kind words, um, Hasso, all the owners uh, for their support over the years. Um, you made this place a home for me. And uh, it was always special coming into the rink, um, coming in and seeing the, the fans. We have the best fans in the league for sure, uh, especially playoff time. It was always the best being able to get that, get that little extra uh, adrenaline going with the, with the, sh with the fans uh, pumping us up. Um, I want to thank uh, all the coaches I've had over the years, trainers. Um, some of you have been with my whole career and uh, the very special bond you have uh, being with, with the trainers and coaches and being on the road with and going out and doing things together and getting in late at night, um, all, the, all those things, uh, all those ups and downs you go through, those are, that's how you get, you get that strong bond. Teammates, thank you guys for being here, especially everybody showed up today and um, this is what makes the game fun, is all the friendships, all the battles you go through, um, all those that you'll, you'll have for the rest of your, your life. Um, it makes the journey that much more special, and I want to thank you guys for being a part of it. Um, 
I'd like to thank my family uh, that are, that's back home that couldn't be here today. Uh, my mom and dad, my brother and sister and their families and all the extended family, all the Marlowe's I have uh, all across Canada. Um, the support that they showed throughout uh, my career is all be forever grateful for. Thank you. Um, meeting my wife here, I had some, uh, some privileges. Uh, we were able to have a family that lived with us. Uh, my, all my in-laws, thank you guys for all your support, um, helping out with the family and the boys. And, and when I'm not on the road for a week or two and uh, the boys need to be all at their hockey games, so thank you for that. Um, I'd like to thank my, my agent, uh, Don Baisley was my agent for a number of years, and um, all the wisdom and all the guidance he gave me um, was, uh, was unbelievable. I think he helped me so much in my career that uh, I could never thank him enough. And for Pat, for the last number of years, has been helping me through, uh, guide me through my last years as a hockey player, and I appreciate all his support and help. Um, to to Christina and my boys, Landon, Brody, Jagger, and Caleb. I want to thank you for all the sacrifices you've made over the years and uh, all the support you've, you've given me. I couldn't have lived out my dream of being a professional hockey player and, and having a family at the same time if it wasn't for you guys. And I love you and thank you. And uh, for me, the biggest thing about talking and, and saying something in, in front of everybody is that you're going to miss, miss somebody. And I, I'm pretty sure I've, there's too many people to name, so uh, I apologize if I missed you. But I will definitely get around to thanking each and every one um, in an individual or basis. So thank you. And uh, with that being said, I announce my retirement. And I want to, I'm gonna, gonna end it on. Uh, I don't know if anybody's read the article that was published this morning, but I'm gonna end it the same way the article was ended, by saying thank you, hockey. Let's hear it for Patrick Marlowe. Wow, that's very special. Right now, we're not done yet, though, folks, because we have a lot of other things that we would like to showcase for you today. We'd like to direct everybody in the building's attention to the in-house monitors for a special video presentation. San Jose is proud to select from the Seattle Thunderbirds, Patrick Marlowe.
is now the all-time record holder in games played in the history of the National Hockey League. A special video indeed, but we have a couple of other guests who were not able to be here today, but who wanted to share this milestone day with their great friend and former teammate, Patrick Marlowe. Let's go back to the video screen. Patrick, if anybody ever earned retirement, it is you. From the moment you entered the league in 1997, your dedication to our game has been obvious, and your diligence in pursuing excellence each and every night for 23 seasons has been remarkable. As a young player, as a superstar, and as a veteran mentor, you represented the best our game has to offer. It's only fitting that you are the one who broke Gordy Howe's NHL's game played record. Frankly, I can hardly remember a time when there was no Patrick Marlowe in the NHL, and I go back a long way. While we will miss watching you play, we wish you well in retirement, and we know that you will bring the same level of class and commitment to your post-playing career that you have always brought to the National Hockey League. Wishing you all the best. Hey, Patty, just want to say congratulations on a tremendous career. Um, you meant so much to a lot of us in this, uh, this locker room here in San Jose. Um, for myself personally, coming into this league and just getting to watch you on a day-to-day -day basis meant, uh, meant a ton. Uh, you're a consummate pro. You showed up every day to get better. Um, you know, Mikey Aldridge told me in my first training camp, just watch Patty and, uh, and do what he does, and, and you'll play some, some years in this league. Um, you know, you're, you're always an awesome teammate. You cared so much. You had that fire burning. And, uh, just awesome to learn from you every day. You're going to have uh, a great time in retirement. Um, I'm sure the kids are going to keep you busy, you and Christina. Uh, it was great getting to know you over the years, Patty. Um, enjoy retirement. Patty, what's up? Uh, wanted to send a message in here saying congrats. Congrats on an exciting day for you. Um, what a great career you've had. Uh, you know, I remember my first game. You were my first line mate. Bumped you over to the right wing. Took the center position. Um, I don't think you'll ever understand the impact you you made on me as a player, as a person. Um, it's just incredible. Words won't ever describe it. Uh, when I moved to Dallas, I always get the question, how do you, you know, why are you still playing at a high level? And, you know, the, the, one of the things that I go back to is, is learning from a guy like yourself and seeing it every day, right from day one. And just the impact that you leave on your teammates and, and you've left on me is is incredible. And I hope you, hope you the best for today. And, um, you know, just enjoy it. Love you, bud. Patrick Marlowe, two-time Olympic gold medalist. You won the world championship. You won the World Cup. All-time leader in games played in NHL history. You scored over 500 goals. Crazy. 14th all-time in postseason goals. You did it when it mattered. You were loved by your teammates. We all love you so much. Enjoy retirement, my friend. You've earned it. Very special to hear from Commissioner Gary Bettman, Sharks Captain Logan Couture, former Captain Joe Pavelski, and of course, Joe Thornton. At this time, we have some questions I'm sure that members of the media have for Patrick Marlowe or for anyone up here on stage. We'd just like to ask as you raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you so that everybody can be heard and we be free to open it up so I can call on you. Feel free to uh, raise your hand. Curtis Pichelka, San Jose Mercury News. Hi, Patrick. Congratulations on a terrific career. When did you finalize this decision? What was when that? did you finalize the decision? Uh, probably just a couple weeks ago. I think I, I, think I knew it was... Uh, I was going to retire a long time ago, but uh, finally building up, building up enough courage to get up here and speak, and <laughs> now it's my retirement. Josh Jubel. Patrick, congratulations. Just 
what was this last year like for you not playing? Uh, and how, how, was it easier or harder than you thought? And just how did that contribute to it? Uh, a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, it's been hard. I won't lie. I, I think a lot of people sometimes say, oh, yeah, everything's okay. But it's, it's been difficult. To, uh, I mean, I've played this game pretty much all my life and, and love it. Um, and I'm getting a whole new found respect for my wife and my family and all the things that they had to go through when I was gone, just the day-to-day. But uh, that's my new challenge, and it's what I'm looking forward to doing now. So I can't wait to, to become the best father and, and husband I can, can be. Here's Shang Peng. Uh, Patrick, congratulations. Uh, what's the next step for you, and uh, would you like to at some point get into hockey, get back into hockey? Yeah, the uh, next step is just uh, spending some time with the family and, and uh, coaching my kids. Um, I don't know what the, the future will hold, but maybe uh, my wife seems to think somewhere down the road I'll be back in hockey somehow. So um, we'll see how it, how it all plays out. But definitely uh, the boys and, and my family are, and Christina are the main focus right now. Gives you a different perspective on coaching, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> Marco. Patrick, congratulations again on an amazing career you had here in San Jose. You were a San Jose icon here. And what I want to know is, you know, you talk about how Mario Lemieux was your hero growing up and how he influenced you to, to play hockey. Now, have you been able to take some time and reflect that you've been an inspiration to a lot of these kids here in San Jose and the South Bay, that they wanted to play hockey because they saw you play here in San Jose? Yeah, I always think it's kind of funny to see to see that, but uh, being there on the rink and being around uh, the kids that are playing here and um, talking to the families and parents and having it's pretty pretty cool to see when there's a kid with your jersey on, or uh, they they come up and say you're my favorite player and can I get a picture with you? So um, when that does happen, you you take uh, you know it, it humbles you, I think to think that these kids, that's what I was doing. I was growing up, I was looking up to Mary Lemieux and all these other players and and to, you know, kind of be the person that, that kids are looking up to now. It's, uh, it's a big responsibility, but it's also pretty cool that they, they do that. And I, uh, I enjoy, you know, when somebody comes up to me like that and, and, they, and wants to have a picture, have something signed, I'll take all the time in the world to do that for them. Charanbil Mahal. Well, congratulations, uh, Patrick. Uh, you probably don't recall it, but in 2017, after the season, I was talking to you in the locker room and saying, what do you think of the retirement? And you looked at me saying, I have plenty of hockey left in me, and now I realize how stupid that question was mm-hmm. <laughs> at that point. Um, at some point, you had to realize that you had a potential to, to cross Gordie Howe, and that number was in your sight where it was too close to quit. When was that? And um, um, how do you, how do you felt about reaching that goal? Um, I don't know. I think for me, um, I, was still tr- I was still trying to reach the ultimate goal of winning a Stanley Cup. That was kind of the, the main focus. And uh, it, wasn't more, it wasn't about passing Gordie Howe. Obviously, people were talking about that. And um, to go through a regular season, you never know bumps and bruises you could get hurt it could you know it's it's a day i mean people get hurt a lot i was very fortunate throughout my career where where i didn't get too badly hurt um but yeah but probably last couple of years i would say where you kind of see like it, it could be a possibility but uh i think my drive was always just helping my team win hey patty congratulations I remember you when you were that 17-year-old boy coming into camp. <laughs> uh, over this last year, have you had a chance to reflect a little bit and think about what really are the things that stand out the most during your time, maybe in San Jose and your overall hockey career? Um, I, I don't know if I've reflected all that much. I think, uh, I think it'll come more to me later on, but I think the, the biggest thing that'll stand out, and I think it's... Some, some things that most of the retired players say that they miss. It's being in the locker room. It's being with the friend, uh, all your buddies on the road. Um, obviously, competing with each other and, and, and doing those things, 
you know, creates that bond, and that's something I, I've found that uh, I'm missing. And um, But uh, very thankful for that I had it for so many years. You know, when you were a rookie, Patrick, uh, you were – you weren't old enough to buy a beer, actually, in California. But uh, you had a real influence on you that first year. Kelly Rudy and his family took you in. And then later in your career, you were able to influence people like Austin Matthews and Mitchell Marner and a lot of the young guys that came through with the San Jose Sharks. But if you could reflect on that time, that very first year, and what that meant to you and how it gave you an idea of what it meant to be a professional hockey player. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, my first year, um, finally made the team, I think, after maybe a month or so living in the hotel they said oh you can get a place and um and they said uh, kelly has a guest house so i thought okay i'm gonna jump on that it's already you know got a carpool buddy right away but uh but living with kelly um being able to pick his brain um the knowledge he had for playing for so many years um the ins and outs of the game um was so powerful for me at, at such a young age and then uh to get a glimpse into what life could look like later on down the road with him and his family, with Don and the kids, um, was pretty pretty cool to experience to be able to do that and uh, and see how how their family ran and how everything worked together. And now I have my family and, and doing the same thing. And um, you know, Kelly's and Donna's biggest thing was just to pay it forward. And uh, so I was able to do that with uh, you know Steve Bernier and Austin and Mitch and you know tried to even though they weren't living at my place uh some of these guys uh, it was always something I, I took pride in and and tried to make uh kelly and donna proud great curtis uh question for jonathan here how to put you on the spot but when does number 12 go up in the in the rafters here I guess the fans answered their question. <laughs> I'm sure we have the opportunity to do something appropriate next year once we know what the season schedule looks like. Otherwise, the fans are going to come after me. Any more <laughs> questions? Well, I think we have come to the conclusion of a very special event here at SAP Center. As I said, it's, uh, it's going to be a long time before we ever honor anyone who played 21 seasons in a Sharks uniform. This is a class person, a friend to all, and someone who's going to be a big part of hockey in Northern California for a long time. Let's hear it for Patrick Marlowe. Thank you. At, the, at this time, we've come to the end of our event today. Patrick is going to uh, have some on-site one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews, perhaps, and an opportunity with, uh, with the media and with NBC Sports. Would you like to thank everybody for tuning in today? And right now, we go back to our regularly scheduled programming on the Sharks Audio Network. Thank you. Thank you.